Hey guys, Taylor here from the editing room. Just reminding you guys that we are on a brief hiatus while we transition between recording spaces. Uh, but don't worry, we'll have a couple more pocket change episodes for you guys while you're waiting for us to figure things out. Uh, unfortunately, everything that we talk about can't always make it onto the podcast due to the need to fit within a time constraint. But this is one of those rare occasions where you could hear with something that could have been in but was cut out because of that reason. So this is an outtake from our episode Lost on a Mountain for $15, which you should probably go listen to because of plugging reasons. Anyway, this outtake has Randy and I talking about beauty, the importance of beauty, things that we find beautiful, um, and, and, you know, where that conversation takes us. So I hope you enjoy it, and, uh, yeah, catch you guys next time. Peace. My iPad had 100% this morning, and now it has 19%. My iPad had 100% this morning, and now it has 75%. You clearly didn't use your iPad enough today. I didn't. I mean, I spent most of the day um, sleeping. I spent most of the day trying to watch Colette. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I went to the art museum today. Yeah? Yeah. yeah you, said, you said you saw some, some of the Van Gogh. Van Gogh. Van Gogh. Van Gogh. Van Gogh. Um, so it was actually like a, a mashup between uh, two different artists. So it was David Hockney and Vincent Van Gogh because David Hockney is more of like a, he's a modern artist, I guess. Not modern artist, but he's living today. Like he, he wasn't in like the 1800s. He didn't live in the 1800s. So he got a lot of his inspiration from Van Gogh. And so that's why they put the two of those together. Which piece did they have? You said they had one of Van Gogh's pieces. They had multiple of his pieces. I could not name them off the top of my head, but they were all revolved around, well, I guess all of Van Gogh's stuff revolves around landscapes. No, he did some portraits. He did, he did a few portraits, um, but most of it revolves around like nature. and Yeah, and... so it was things like that. It was just, I, I can't remember it. Uh, one that I really liked was um, when he had chucked himself into an insane asylum. Um, it The painting, it was called like, I don't know, the, the path garden pathway or something because it was the pathway behind the asylum that he had painted um i really like that one and then there was some other ones where it was just like trees and foliage and things like that it was really nice yeah i did um i did some studies of van uh van Hoch's pieces um it, a lot of I, I mostly look at his sketch work um and his pen penmanship and, and stuff like that so i did um, a couple of his unnamed sketches. I did some studies of those in my own sketchbook. Uh, it was really fun. I really enjoyed it, actually. Um, but, you know, it, like, it's so interesting to me how something can look so simple and yet be so complex at the same time when it comes to art. Mm -hmm. Like, it, it's just his... When you, when you look at it, it's like, oh, this is just a sketch, and you feel like you could do it. Like, yeah. And, but then when you really, like, get down to the nuances of what it takes... And the specific types of lines and the weight that those lines carry and how that portrays shadow and, and light and color, even if there is no color. Like, it, it is, it's just crazy. It's no, just insane. It's extremely difficult. Also, the David Hockney, the guy, the other person who was there, he went through so many stages. He had done everything. He had done charcoal on paper. He had done acrylic on canvas, oil on canvas. He had done watercolor on paper. He did uh, electronic. He did like iPad. And we got to see like, because he recorded it. He's, it's recent. He's still alive today. Um, and he did like iPad sketches and they had videos of him like actually like drawing it out and shading. Oh and yeah, everything. like because in Procreate you can like record. save mm -hmm. and record the process. That, it was so cool. Another thing that I, I mean, this is way off topic but it was so cool and i want to i want more people to go because this is he also did video but what he did oh my god it was beautiful it was immaculate um what he did was he strapped nine cameras to a car and then um like with stabilizers and everything and then drove down this one pathway and then he edited all the videos together to make one big image and they like fit each other so he edited them to where each image would then sync up with the next one and so it was three by three and you and you just you're driving down this pathway and it's just you're you're there. 
Like the because because of all of the different camera shots that he got and was able to put together, you feel like you are there, that you are standing on that road and you are driving down that road, and it was just beautiful. And he did this four times for each season. There's one that's in the winter, one that's in autumn, one that's in spring, and one that's in summer. And he matched up each video then to sync with all of the others, so you're going down each of these paths at the exact same moment, but at different times. Oh my god, that is an interesting piece. Beautiful. Is it like a huge installation? A huge installation. Oh, that's awesome. It's beautiful. I love that. I love, like, some of the things that modern artists come up with and do really, really, like, interesting and, you know, just beautiful. Like, But that's something that I've, like, actually thought of before because I, I don't know about you. I drive a lot and I like to drive. I, I was talking to my boyfriend yesterday. I was kind of having a mental breakdown. I was like, I should just quit school and be a truck driver. I'm like, that's <laughs> just what I should just do. Honest, they make so much they more money. They make so much money. And that's, okay, but the other thing is we can take, we can take a semester off of school and like school will keep, like our scholarships will keep like everything so we can just come back if we want to. I'm thinking I should just take a semester off, just try truck driving and see what happens. See what happens. Just see what happens. I may never come back to college. <laughs> you may never see I me may, again. <laughs> I may never get a degree. Um, no, but I don't remember what. I, oh, I've had this idea before where because I drive so much and sometimes the just the sunset or the sunrise is just so beautiful. I am I I, I just love the sky so much. You can never fully capture it. No painting, no picture will ever be able to fully capture the beauty that is the sky. I am a firm believer in that and I was not a believer in that for a very long time. I lived out in rural Texas for just way too long <laughs> mm -hmm. but what and it's and it's strange because you'd think out in rural texas you would get better sunsets you'd, but yeah you'd think. you'd think and and sure like the, the the sky at night was a little bit better than it is out here in in, in houston where we stay i saw that just the 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 most picturesque clouds mm -hmm. perfect fluffy like the shadows are hitting it just clouds right and it was favorite. huge and yeah. it was it was just like it was just this moment of like awe like i almost sat down there and was like painted it like i just i couldn't get it out of my head yeah but i was like i have so many things i need to be doing There's, i don't have the time for that and that's so upsetting to me as an artist and feeling that that art in in me mm -hmm. and not being able to have the time or, or maybe the will to to, to, to get Do it out it. Mm -hmm. you know because i don't know there's things that are just so beautiful I, oh my gosh, it's so, and I see it. And so what I was going to say is that I, I've wanted to do that. I've wanted to put for a while on that. I want to put a camera in the back of my car, not like to where you could still see like the two like seats, the headrest, mm -hmm. but you could see out of the front windshield and maybe the side windows as well. And you could like, and just drive and just drive down the freeway and have the sunset and then just, just upload it just so everyone could enjoy that just serene because there's nothing like that i've experienced it so many times and as a person who has a lot of anxiety there's never a time when i am more at peace than driving down the freeway looking at a gorgeous sunset i am close to that i mean we're both pretty anxiety stricken beings um but i feel the best when i drive in a city oh really i and if there, you know, on the off chance that there isn't any traffic or driving by a city mm -hmm. or driving through a city on an interstate and in a place where it's 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 just pitch dark and all you can see is just the, the lights of the city and um, the the lights of the stars or maybe the, the street lamps. I, I really like that urban darkness. OK, that makes sense. It's very it's strangely calming to me, considering that I used to get vertigo looking up at tall buildings. Mm. Um <laughs> But to me, I don't know. To me, it's just there's something so captivating. No, yeah, about it, you know? I, I get that. When you first said cities, I imagine cities in the day, which no, that raises my anxiety. I had to go because I went to the art museum. I had to go downtown today. Oh no, I cannot handle downtown. People just walk wherever they want to walk, and I'm, sir, I'm in a vehicle. <laughs> I will hit you, and you could die. And you, and then I'm going to jail for you walking when your sign says no. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I can't. No, but I get what you're saying. Like at night, when it's calm, and you just have like the the city lights and the building lights and. I can see that. And you know that there's a lot of things going on, but you were so disconnected from that. Yeah. And you're by yourself in a car. Yeah. Um, you're just looking at it from a distance. You're just seeing 
seeing the architecture for what it is, mm-hmm. seeing the lights for what they are, and it's so interesting. It's glorious. Just glorious. Media for the Intellectually Impoverished is produced by Trey Taylor Smith and Miranda Randy Zapes. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at MFTII Podcast or email us at MFTII Podcast at gmail.com. That's MFT2I's Podcast. Thanks for listening.